Hey guys, Michael here. So I'm going to be going over the leak code question valid anagram. So the problem statement is given two strings s and t, write a function to determine if t is an anagram of s. Uh, so an anagram is just a fancy way of saying two words have the same count of characters. So to give you an example, if I have the string anagram and nagaram, my function should return true. And that is because there are three A's in anagram and three A's in nagaram. And there's one N, one G, one R, and one M in both of these words. So they have the same count of characters for every character in the word. Um, another important note that they give us, it says you may assume the string contains only lowercase alphabet characters. Um, so this is actually really important information for us. Uh, so there's kind of a neat trick that you can do to solve this problem. And it, it involves knowing the ASCII table a little bit. So I think the best way to understand this is to actually just show you through a concrete example. So what I have here, you have your uh, alphabet, A to Z. Uh, below here is, you can think of it as an integer array. So you have my brackets, and there are 26 zeros. Each zero corresponds to the letter directly above it. Now, why do we have an integer array of size 26? Well, that's because there are 26 letters in the alphabet. So what we're doing is we're mapping each index to a single character. So right here we have the zeroth index, B would be mapped to the first index, C to the second, D to the third, and so on, all the way to Z having the 25th index place. So uh, why is this important? Well, if I have the, back to the example, anagram and nagaram, what we can do to check if these two words are anagrams is we can get the count of characters for our first word. So this would be our first word. We count up for every character in this specific word. And then once we do that, we move over to our second word, nagaram. And then we start counting down. Now, once we do that, if all of the numbers in our integer array are zeros, we know that they have to be anagrams. So I'll go through the example. Uh, it'll make a lot more sense. So if I have this first character, I have an A. I have one A here, a second A, and third A in anagram. So we can go up here in our integer array and we can change this to a three because there are three A's in the first word anagram. Uh, now we have one letter N. So now we can go up here, change this to a count of one. And then G, so G, R and M, they all have a count of one as well. So go right here, G, R, and M. Those all have counts of one as well. So we are done with step one. We've gotten the count of each character in the first word. So now what we can do is we're onto our second word. Now we're going to be counting down. So if we look right here. In our first character we have an n. So we go up here in our integer array and we start subtracting instead of adding now. So now we subtract just one because there's only one n in nagaram. Uh, now let's move over to the character a. As you can see there's also three a's in nagaram. So we go back up to our integer array. Three minus three would be zero. And I think you can understand where I'm getting at here. There's one G, one R, and then one M in Nagaram. So now 
we can go back to our G, M, and R, and we can change those to zeros as well. So as you can see, we are back where we started. So now, th this is essentially the whole algorithm, is first increasing the count of your characters for the first word, and then decreasing the count of your characters for the second word. And if all of your characters, all of, all of your integers in this array are zero, then you know the two words will be anagrams. So how do I represent this? How do I actually map the character A to the zeroth index and the B to the first index? So this is where you use the ASCII table. So if we move over to an ASCII table right here, you can see we have the different lowercase letters right here. So we have A, B, C, all the way down to Z. And starting from A, A is represented as 97 in decimal. And then B is represented 98, C and 99, all the way up to 122. So keeping that in mind that each character has a decimal value, we can actually perform subtraction on different characters. So what do I mean by that? Say we wanted to do the character A minus the character A. Well, this, if according to our ASCII table where A equals 97, this is equivalent to 97 minus 97, and this equals zero. So another example, let's say we have the character C minus the character A. So if we go back to our ASCII table, C is 99 in decimal format. So this is equivalent to 99 minus 97. And that equals 2. So what we're doing is we're actually calculating the index. So these answers right here, the, these calculations, are our index. So as you can see, we did A minus A, and we got the answer 0. So uh, you can see right here that A is at index 0. So A and C. So now C minus A, we got a, a value of 2. And as you can see right here, C maps to the index 2. So this is actually how we get to count each and every character and actually calculate the specific index. That way we, this is a really nice method uh, of solving this problem because we don't have to use a hash map. You know, we can use a pretty, just a, a fixed size array to solve this problem. So I will jump into the code and show you exactly how this will look. So we have our string S and string T as input. Uh, the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create our integer array. So we can just call this letters, and we're going to be initializing at a fixed size of 26, because there are 26 characters in the alphabet. The next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create a character array, so pretty much just convert our input strings to character arrays. So we can just call it R1, so S2 char array, and then create R2, S2 char array, oh, T, 2 char array. So the first step we want to do, as I mentioned before, for the first word we want to count the number of characters and we want to increase the number. So we can cycle through the R1 character array and what we're going to want to do since we're increasing we can say letters at the index uh, the index will be 
R1 of I minus A. So what we're doing here, R1 at index I is a character. So for example, let's say we go back to our first example. Say we're reading through the, the character array anagram. The very first index of anagram will be the character A. So R1 at 0 is equal to the character A, right? So if we did the character A minus A, that would be the zeroth index. So we're actually counting, so we're counting each character. So this would turn to a 1 now. So all we have to do here, I'll erase this. All we have to do is increase the count at that position. And it's pretty much the same step for the second part. The only difference is we're cycling through array 2, and we're also going to be subtracting. That's the only difference between the two. And finally, this is actually the last step. We need to make sure that all of the all of the counts in our integer array are zero. If there is any integer in our letters array that is not a zero, we know that they are not anagrams. So what we can do is we can say for int, uh, we'll call it letter in our letters, and we say if the letter is not equal to zero, then we should return false because they, they do not share the same amount of characters. If this exits just fine, then we return true, meaning they are anagrams. And this is the solution. So we can submit this solution just to make sure it passes all of the test cases. And there we go. It passes, and that is how you solve the valid anagram problem on LeetCode. Uh, let me know if you guys want me to solve a specific problem. Just leave it in the comments, and I will try to get around to it. All right, thank you.